OpenAI released an update to GPT-4 Turbo. More specifically, now we have the ability to access the vision capability on this new endpoint, GPT-4 Turbo 2024-0409. Now, a major question I've been getting asked in the comments is, okay, this is super cool, but how the heck do we leverage it in the assistance API? So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how. Now, to be clear, this is a workaround. So I'm gonna give you a code way of approaching this logic, but also I'm gonna give you a no code way of approaching this logic. Let's jump in. Earlier this week, I did an entire video on this tweet we got from OpenAI developers talking about this endpoint. More specifically, I ran a little scenario of like what the cost would be associated with this kind of app where you take a picture, you get the calories. So you can check out that video right there to get more context on that. But after that video, I got a ton of comments asking me how the heck do we leverage this in an assistance API. First off, let's see if it's even possible within the current assistance UI that we have access to to see an image using this endpoint. So I'm going to go ahead and name this image test. And you're just going to have a simple instructions here. We're going to say, tell me what is in the image, period. We're going to go to the specific model that was released recently, which is GBT4 Turbo 2024-0409. And this should be sufficient. We're going to go ahead and go to the playground. In this playground, in theory, based on what we've been told in the documentation, this endpoint should have the ability to read images. Let's test it, though. I'm going to go and attach an image. The image I attached is going to be a fake invoice here. And we're going to simply ask this endpoint, what is this invoice? What is this image I attached? Hit run. But then we get that kind of response. Sorry, I can't currently view images. However, I can help you understand, analyze text or descriptions of the images you provide them. This is no good though, as a lot of people want to leverage this assistance API in the context of reading images. So in this video, Let's see the possible workaround. Also, I want to point out, if you want to see more in-depth videos on just how to leverage assistance without this new update, check out this video right here. I show you how to manage like over 50 files within assistant. If you don't know what an assistant API is, think of it as like an even lasered in version of these models, but you can provide like, you know, different files, functions, code interpreter. There's a bunch of like extra layering of the cake we can do with these kind of assistance APIs to make it more specialized for my business. I've done like three or four videos on this topic. So either look through my channel or type in Corbin Assistance API. Therefore, in order to leverage this kind of technology, let's go and create a new assistant. Let's say create new assistant here. And this assistant, let's just say, is going to be our invoice handler. So I'm invoice handler. First way I'm going to show you is going to be a no-code way. We're going to say invoice handler. We will provide you with invoice data. I'm going to go to upper model to GPT for Turbo, the modern one. We're going to say we'll provide you with invoice data. Based on this data, please write an email summarizing it. This is going to be really simple because I just want to show you how to do it. Obviously, there's a ton of other stuff like I referenced earlier. So if you want to see the other videos of adding files, making this more laser in for a business, adding context, adding all this other stuff, go ahead and watch that. We have our current assistant. It's going to be invoice handler. We have our directions. We have our model. Let's go ahead and jump over to Zapier. In Zapier, let's go ahead and say create new Zap. Now we have a new Zap here. Let's go ahead and do a trigger of Google Drive folder. This is going to how we're going to provide the data that's going to be read. We're going to do an event of new file and folder. We're going to do an account. Okay, that should be fine. Actually, test data here. Perfect. And let's go ahead and jump over to Drive. In our Drive here, we're going to go ahead and drag over that image I had earlier. I like showing Drive in these kind of cases because of the fact that it's a free service. So you can get access to it right away and you can test this yourself without paying anything. We got our invoice paid PNG in here. Let's go ahead and first off, basically find the data that's relevant in this invoice. Assistant API is our name here. We're gonna go ahead and test this trigger and we should see the relevant piece of data here, which is the invoice paid. So basically every time we wanna trigger this, we would just drag in the file in that specific folder and then it would proceed everything that we're about to do today. There we go. We got our file here, invoice paid PNG. This is the workaround y'all. We're gonna do a chat GPT block. Do chat GPT. We're gonna do an event of analyze image content with vision. Cause here's the idea. You have a laser in an assistance API. Your assistance API is trained on your data, is trained on everything you want it to be trained on. You have it where it's very lasered in for the specific task you want it to do. You can reference previous conversations with it, et cetera, et cetera. But here's the one thing it can't do, read images. But we can still provide the information that would be necessary that we would feed the assistance API already. E.g., if we were already gonna do the assistance API in the context of reading an image, what are we doing? We're internalizing specific data from that image to feed it into the assistance API. So a great workaround is let's just get the data that we would want anyways, and then feed it into the assistance API with a midterm block. 
This is actually a pretty common workflow in the context of building out software where you want to reformat data and pass it down to another open AI block or AI provider block. In this context, we're doing it specifically to feed it into the assistance API. But a lot of times in software and in development, you could do this in other contexts where maybe you have a ton of data that you want to compress with a 3.5 block and then use a chat GPT-4 block of that compressed data and provide another value point that way. So this is normal and this is standard. We're going to apply to assistance API. Therefore, let's go ahead and say continue. We're going to choose our account, continue. I'm going to do the message here. We're going to just say provide all the relevant information from this invoice will do things such as bill to bill to comma descriptions comma total amount etc so if you want to get very specific here i have a bunch of other stuff on this topic but the idea here is that i just want to show you let's grab the data and then play with it so we're going to expect based on the bill to descriptions and see what else they see is relevant in this context we're going to continue here and test this step uh, so the image is going to be file exists, but not shown. It's not going to be the title as that's a string of data, just text. This is the actual image itself. And here's the relevant information. So we got the bill to, we got the from, we got the date, we got the description. Oh, this one basically overboard. So <laughs> I said, et cetera. So basically that took it as let's just provide all the relevant data found within that image to gut check this real quick. Let's find out. Bill to Olivia Wilson. Bill to Olivia Wilson. Final price is around 2,100. And we were looking at 2,100. Perfect. And four different services. Revision, social media templates, local design, graphic design. All right. That has all the relevant information that we want. Therefore, from extracting this data from this image, we can feed this into an assistant block. So I'm going to go ahead and click this little plus button here and do another chat GPT. New chat GPT here. We do an event and we do conversation with assistant. I'm going to continue here. Continue again. And with the message, since we've already proctored within our assistance dashboard, what to do, we actually don't have to worry too much here. We can actually just provide the invoice data like this. Invoice data, semicolon, parentheses, and we should expect a response, an email, relevant to this information. Let's choose our assistant. We got our assistant right here, invoice handler, and everything else should be standard here. Everything else is kind of already preset in that dashboard that we saw earlier. We're gonna continue here, and I should be expecting an email, or like a pseudo email, or a draft email. <laughs> Here we go. So this is the data we fed to it. I like using invoice. Um, I like referencing the value variable point because of the fact that we said that earlier here, we said the invoice data here. So we're going to reference that with what we provide here. Then we do parentheses in order to basically compartmentalize the data that we're providing here. And then we're going to come down here and we should see an email and boom, subject line invoice summary invoice two zero 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 one five from Wardeer Inc. Dear Olivia Wilson, we confirmed that earlier and we should see all the relevant information in our invoice 2100 and all the relevant information in regards to that image. Therefore, the logic you just saw here can be translated in a code-like manner. All you need to understand in that context is we're gonna be passing data around within an HTTP callable function or whatever, you know, maybe you wanna use a Firebase database flow that might be a little bit more cost heavy. But the idea there basically is that you call that endpoint in the first one, the first function right here, and you, you know, say your max token, say your temperature, have your prompt, provide the relevant data point of the image, ask you for an output. And then the second part of that logic would be like the output from that first function or from that first callable point, you would send it to the assistance API in the code. And then you'd get your relevant information slash data that you care about. This is pretty common in the context of software development and just workflow in general, where you kind of want to maybe, you know, restructure the data a little bit before you send it to a further workflow or, or further chat GPT block or anthropic block or whatever you're using in that context. What I will say is that probably in the future, let's hope at least, <laughs> when referencing the Assistance API, they'll make it more native and integrated so you don't have to necessarily do that little middle block between. If you feel like you learned something in today's video, make sure to leave a like, it's completely free. We'll leave another Assistance video I did a couple weeks ago and showing you how to leverage it for your business. At the end here, I'm also gonna leave a playlist showing you how to leverage AI and automation. This is the playlist I was referring to when it comes to AI and automation and how to leverage it in your business. That is an assistance video, more specifically an assistance API video. You can start learning how to leverage this kind of tech easier. And that's my face. Daily content. Subscribe. Bye-bye.